you. <laughs> I think about the time I remember to do the recordings would be the time we don't do this anymore. And yeah, it's a whole thing. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I appreciate the support. Um, so please don't forget to do this, right? It's nice to be able to um, use this and have some input on what um, house you're sorted into. So please make sure that you do this um, and get it submitted into the Dropbox. Um, <coughs> you can turn in either just a word of whatever animal um, you get or you can turn in the picture that it gives you when you're done. Um, either way, um, I'll get it. If you don't turn anything in, I'll have to randomly assign you to whatever um, house has the least number of people. But most of the time, um, doing this actually does separate you into four equal groups. It's super weird, super great. Um, but please make sure that you do this. Um, the other thing I do want to remind you guys of is Is it? Oh, yours is at the top. Getting my classes mixed up. I apologize. This business, um, I don't actually think I ended up with another email about this of how to actually go to this stuff. <laughs> well, they sent an email. I think it's Sarah Fisher's, but the links were wrong and didn't work to make the appointment. I did it last night and they kind of worked, but I don't know how the so all of it is online so I will tell you that um, hundred percent everything is online uh, for this stuff um, so if professor Fisher's email which I did a very poor job of reading through the links and that should just work on the times I do need to express for my class I'm super chill about this so if, if you just try I'm gonna be happy right um, that's going to make me happy with it. So just put forth good faith effort, and I'm going to be happy about it. Um, that's sort of how this stuff tends to go. Um, so I get it's probably going to be buggy. Um, some of the rooms might be full. That's fine. So when you write your summaries, just let me know what you did, what you tried to do, and how it went. And as long as you're honest and you did make an attempt and you did do a thing, um, everything's fine. Does that make sense? Okay. So one, don't forget about it. Okay, and don't not do it. Are the expectations for that pretty clear? It's certainly not clear as glass, because I'm not super clear as glass on what's happening this weekend, which I know can feel a little uncomfortable. Um, so if you're getting into something and you get frustrated or stressed, feel free to remind at me about it, um, and I'll do my best. But largely what I'll probably say is just record what you did as your summary, and it'll be fine. You'll get the points, because I pretty much have zero power over what's happening here. I'm mostly just doing my whole faculty support role thing. Okay. Any questions about either of these two things, either the houses or this? Okay, the last thing I kind of want to remind you guys of, since I won't see you, and I'll try to send out a remind app if I remember, or an email. Um, I did email my Tuesday lab last night, uh, right, because I won't actually see all of you until Tuesday morning lab, which is super weird and super unusual. Um, so do your best to remember that the next class we have together will be the Tuesday lab. Um, so I sent instructions on how that will work this week, um, which is pretty simple. Everybody's doing the same thing, so we're not going to be dividing and conquering tasks. It is somewhat awkward. Um, so all of the information is there for you. Group A will show up first. You'll have the first half of class. Group A will show up B. I'm just going to keep saying A for everything. Group B will show up second for the second half of class. I sent the time splits in the email. It's also posted in the announcements forum on the Tuesday Lab section page. So it's always there for you to review. I will consistently do that, and I will try to remember to remind you through the Remind app as well. Monday, I know it can feel a little like 
information you don't need, but their stuff's a little more complicated, so please just ignore the stuff when you see it pop up. Okay, so keep that in mind. Tuesday, there are some videos for you guys to watch so you can get started on the assignment because it's certainly not a one-hour uh, class assignment, but the beginning of the packet, and Monday can attest to this, is fairly chill. Um, so we can get started on that, and then when you come in, we'll do the um, bigger part of the case study together as a group and make sure that everybody's gotten what they need out of it together, and that's my big concern. Okay, so make sure that you've done that as well, and keep in mind you always want to check your emails for those sorts of things. Okay, any questions about any of that stuff? All right, crazy weekend. Um, we made it through week one, though, right? And that's a pretty big achievement. So happy Friday, everybody, and well earned. So, let's go ahead and just take a sip here and do a baby review. When we left off on Wednesday, we had gotten to talking about how do we start, you know what I really want is this picture. Understanding how we start to organize what we're going to talk about in, the, in this class into categories. And so we talked about, well, we certainly can't talk about all of the animals that exist on the planet. So we're just going to talk about vertebrates. And so how do we narrow those vertebrates down right, into their classification schemes? So we started working our way down through this, right? So we said domain was the biggest way, right? Biggest grouping cut. And as we move down, okay, right, we're slowly working with smaller and smaller and smaller groups. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so when we talked about domain, remember, we're looking at, well, we're looking at all life on Earth, so how can we reduce that down? So remember domain, we were talking about cell types. We said, well, our domain was eukaryote, good. Remember eukaryote means true cells? Okay, our biases show when we name things sometimes. That's what this beginning says. We'll see this again. But this just means our membrane-bound cells, right? This is what we are. So we have things like mitochondria, endoplasm, curriculum, and all that bit. And this was versus being, say, prokaryotic. You know, like bacteria. All right, now we're moving down to kingdom. All right, what kingdom are we in? Animalia, good. So we want to talk about animals versus, say, plants or fungi. Okay, so we can cut out all those groups. Okay, so now we're all membrane-bound cell organisms. We're all of the animals on the planet. Still too much, still too much. So how do we cut that down? So now we're going to look at phylum. What phylum are we in? Chordata. Chordata. Good. Okay, so chordates, things with some kind of structural support. Right, so this would be like instead of invertebrates and all of that business, right? So remember, when we talked about chordates, it was all of these guys. And so we had six specific features that we talked about that were iconic that helped us identify, well, what does it mean to be a chordate? And we'll get to see these things in lab week three. And we talked about things like the notochord, 
right? That dorsal stiffening rod. That's like uh, the namesake for this group. We also talk, talked about other things such as the pharyngeal slits, right? The respiratory features, right? Endostyles, the digestive feature, post anal tail, right? all of these things help make chordates a chordate. <clears throat> All right, then we had one left, and we just started this at the end of class, and this has helped us narrow down to the group that we wanted, which is subphylum vertebrata. Good. Handwriting got particularly bad there. Okay, so of all of those organisms, Okay, we want to talk about specifically vertebrates. Okay, so we want to have upgraded versions of these things. Okay? We don't want just a notochord, but we want a strong backbone. Okay? We just started talking about well, what does it exactly mean to be a vertebrate? We'd only gotten through. Rude, rude. There we go a handful of these features, right? The first of which was, well, our chordates, right? We had that dorsal hollow nerve cord at right? the beginnings of a centralized nerve system. Okay, but with these, right, our vertebrates, okay, we added the brain. Okay, and without body shaming our lamprey, we were able to see this feature. Okay, and certainly we know other vertebrates, such as ourselves, right? have them. Okay, and this added a significant feature for nervous processing. Okay, and also because we have a larger feature, allowed it, allowed it? Hmm. Allowed for <laughs> the expansion of sense organs, which is something that we hadn't seen before. Okay, so we could have large or the introduction of things like eyes and ears, taste. We talked about things like the pineal organ, right, that allows you to see really well between black and white, light and dark. And the brain does a great job of being able to incorporate those and store that uh, information, right, because brains do memory. We also talked about pharyngeal arches. Right, so we're actually going to add structure to our respiratory organ, which when you live in the water means that we can increase surface area, make our respiration more efficient. And when we're on land, remember these structures become the bones of the inner ear. Right, it's the same place. Remember, this is our pharynx here, or our voice boxes. So then we get better efficiency with all sorts of other stuff. And then where we left off at the end of class was having the expanded gut system. So remember, we had the endostyle in our chordate, okay, but we wanted to improve that because the endostyle largely was if we saw, remember we saw in that photo for particulate feeding. It was a really small feeding structure. It was still good, okay? It was a specialized structure, but in this case, remember the key with this extracellular digestion, we have things like a holding place in the stomach or in the small intestine where we're dumping extracellular fluid, right? Stomach acid, bile, it helps break down bigger food products, right? Le cheeseburger. And as soon as I can eat something that's bigger, I can get something that's more nutritious. I break it down, absorb that food. Okay, I can hunt bigger and better things, get more nutrients, makes me a bigger, better, more active, more successful hunter that's getting more energy out of its meal. Also means I would need to feed less, right? One big cheeseburger versus eating teeny, teeny weeny crumb sized bits all day long. Okay. That's where we left off on Wednesday. Any questions about everything we had covered so far before we continue forward? Okay, so we had six features that were what it meant to be a chordate.
So we still want six features on what it means to be a vertebrate, which means we need three more. Okay, so we spent a lot of time talking about all of these significantly more efficient upgrades. And really the key here is moving away from diffusion only. Right? And we talked a lot about how diffusion is good, right? It's easy, it's cheap, okay, but it's really limiting. Okay, this was our problem when we talked about both respiration and digestion. Okay? Just diffusing those materials works great. Remember we were picturing with our little worm friend on Wednesday? But the problem is you can only get so big when you're diffusing through. Okay? Because diffusion, if we picture taking a cup of water, right? You're going to drop some food coloring at the top of that cup of water. Okay? How far down is that food coloring going to go? If we don't shake the water or stir it or any of that business, okay, some of that food coloring is going to drip down, but most of it's just going to kind of hang out in the top quarter of the cup, right? That's the same problem with everything else that's going to happen to our organisms, okay? That food, that air that they're taking in doesn't go throughout the body very easy. And the bigger the cup of water, right, the less that food coloring is going to go throughout the water. And so if we're talking about trying to oxygenate a big body, all that oxygen just can't fit in the top quarter of the fish. The whole fish needs oxygen. So the bigger we get, okay, we need more efficient ways to get the oxygen, but then we can't just leave it right there. So what we need then is a system to move all of what we have now gotten in so efficiently, so we can get more oxygen and more food, we're going to move it around. All right, so I was able to <gasps> take a big breath in. Super great, now it's just in my lungs. Now what? Nothing happens. Okay. So the heart and its big key is let's move it around. Chuck it around the body. Okay, so this is a big deal, so we're now free from diffusion. Okay, so I can pick up that oxygen from my lungs, ship it around the body. Okay, take it to where it needs to go. Okay, I can pick up those nutrients from my intestine, ship it around the body, take it where it needs to go. Okay, so now size becomes less inhibitory. Okay, because I'm able to move around all of these important features that I've been able to increase nutrients, oxygen, okay, and move them around to important muscles and important tissues. Okay, so I don't get tired as easy. I can keep my muscles nice and oxygenated and bring nutrients to my body, help them grow. Okay, so my whole body now is becoming a great, beautiful working factory, helping me become a big, bad, fearsome predator, or at least competitor. Okay. We also, and we'll get to see a variety of versions of this, lots of different styles of kidneys but ultimately doing osmoregulation, which is a big fancy word that just means salt water balance. Okay, this is also a big deal because it now means that my body does not have to have the same salt content as the space I'm living in. Right, this is key for organisms that live in the water. Right, I don't have to be a super salty fish. Okay, jellyfish, for example, are the same saltiness as the water around them. 
which is fine, but somewhat difficult, as you imagine how salty the ocean is. So your heart has to be that salty, your brain has to be that salty. It's not super great for organs, but this is even bigger if you think about moving on to land. Okay? You're not embedded in water on land. So something like a kidney is super important for helping you pull water from whatever it is you're doing, drinking or eating, and then ultimately storing that water in your cells. <clears throat> so this will become a really big deal when we talk about what we'll call freedom from water, right? Not having to sit in water constantly to survive. Okay, and lastly, we have to have something for the namesake, right? So we have to have, if we're a vertebrate, we have to have vertebra. So we're going to expand on that notochord. Okay, now remember, okay, the key here is that there's more connection points for muscle. This does not necessarily mean that our organisms have both, right? This is something we talked about on Wednesday a little. We picture it this way because mammal bias. This is the way ours is. We're made of bone, okay? But lots of organisms have this, and they're made of cartilage, okay? For example, like sharks, okay? Big old fishes with big old backbones but are made entirely of cartilage. Okay. So the key is the shape and size of the structure. Okay, so they're all going to look like this, which okay. is not necessarily with calcium phosphate. Okay, so why this is so important is if we consider right this business here. Right, we have our nice rounded piece, flare, flare, flare. And it's a single vertebrate. Okay, versus the notochord, which is just like this nice bendy tube. Nice bendy tube still a big deal because other organisms have no bendy tube. Okay. But this is much, much better. Because not only is it bigger and thicker, so that alone is going to give us better strength to point my face the way I want to go. Remember that was the big deal. But all of these sort of flappy looking bits. Okay, that you can feel on your own spine if you rub your fingers up and down it. They're where all of these extra muscle, muscle, muscle attachment points can be, right? I can wrap a muscle up on here, okay, or around. Okay, and this is really important because the more places you have to attach a muscle, the more muscles you can have, right? The more muscles you can have, the stronger and bigger you can be. So this is another place that we really allow for strength and size. So we have, again, less inhibition on organism size. which is how we get some super big sharks and also some super big land animals, right? Like elephants and all of that. So it's supported by these really powerful structures. Okay, any questions on our subphylum vertebrata? <clears throat> so, if you are going to be a vertebrate then, that means you have to have all of the features of all of those things we just listed. So you're going to be a eukarya, an animalia, a chordate, and a vertebrate, right? Good 
practice. Is it in this one? I feel like it's not in this one. No. Weird little thing. There we go. All right. So if you've not been in my class before, this is a great way to test this because we'll use this on and off. Um, if you have been in my class before, you've seen this. So um, what I want you to do is go to menti.com, or you can download the app if that's your shtick. And once you go there, she's going to ask you to enter the code. And so you have to enter all four parts of this code. And once you do it, she's going to pop up the question for you. And then there's a whole bunch of these different kinds of questions we're going to do throughout the semester. So we're just starting with a fairly calm one. So we can all get used to using the app together. So I can see who's in the app with me. Not very many of us today, are there? Okay, well, that's fine. Stop waiting around for invisible people to vote, though, huh? Okay, so let's look at the ones that we didn't like. What is an endo style? Good, so it's a stomach feature, okay, but it's very small and it's basically focused on helping to filter and digest particles. So what would be the upgrade from an endo style? Good. The gut with extracellular. And we are just gonna shorthand that. Digestion. You meaning outside the cells. Great job. Okay. What are pharyngeal slits? They're for respiration, right? And we call them slits because they're basically slashes or holes in our, pardon me, in our organism, right? They're still openings, okay? with respiratory tissue in them, right, so they do their job. All right, what is the upgrade from this? Pharyngeal arches. Pharyngeal arches. Good. Okay, in other words, eh. we're adding structure, okay, whether that's bony or cartilaginous. Okay, good. I have to switch colors here, so this is a little less confusing. What side of the body is dorsal? My back or my front? My back. Good. Okay. So I'm on the back of my body now. What does the dorsal hollow nerve cord do? It 
<laughs> she got all my answers at once, right on. All right, so this is an integrative structure. So we're going to integrate nerves, and this becomes the brain. Okay. Or integrates with the brain, right? Because we don't lose our dorsal hollow nerve cord, right? We're really adding on to that. So it's upgraded with a brain. Okay. Excellent. So, hey, you guys did a great job. By popular vote, okay, our notochord is upgraded. All right, so that pink does not show up at all, does it? Let's try. To the vertebral column, okay, and in the same way, right? We don't displace the verte uh, the notochord, right? This becomes the center of the vertebra, right? And you guys will get to see that uh, week three when we um, cut one of our organisms in half, and you'll see that notochord embedded right inside. Very, very cool. So we end up strengthening that. I don't remember how to spell vertebra right now. We're doing great on this right. <laughs> That's why I make slides. I can't spell on the fly. All right. Awesome job. So does all of this make sense? So the key as we go through the semester is to think about as we start a new class or subclass or whatever it is we're talking about, think about what are the new traits that are being upgraded. Okay, and what traits are unique or make this group special? Make this group what they are. And that will be the focus for each one we go through. You gotta let me, no, let me back up. Where am I? Rude. Okay, any questions about any of that? Okay, so let's look at some of the major classes that we're going to talk about. Okay, this is a quick summary overview, right? We're going to spend most of the semester going to each of these much more in depth. If we want to get an understanding of who these classes are and what the diversity in each of these looks like. Okay. So, our big class number one chondrixes. Okay, we'll see this ick ending. Okay, ick theology is the study of fishes. So I know it looks like the most impossible word to pronounce, okay, but that's why it looks like that. Right, don't shoot the messenger. The cond at the beginning is telling us this is all of the cartilaginous fishes. Right, cond is just the prefix for cartilage. Okay. So there's a lot of these. Most of the time we tend to think of things like sharks, and indeed that is the vast majority of these organisms. Okay, but this is also going to include things like skates and rays, things that killed uh, Steve Irwin, okay, as well as some um, super weird stuff that we'll spend some time looking at, right? The unsung heroes, okay, of the cartilaginous fishes, but also make up a very small amount of the diversity because they sort of live in the abyss. Let me flip flip. All right. So grand scheme, this is a relatively small group. There's only 900 species total, and we're going to see compared to some of the others, this is quite small. And this is made up of two subgroups. Right, so we've seen this. That's a frazzle. Just think, know what I want to do. Right, so we have class and then subclass. Right, so remember, sub meaning this is a smaller group within this group. 
Okay, so this is within cartilage, cartilaginous fishes. There's two subgroups of cartilaginous. And the elasome branchiae, as we'll find, are the sharks, skeets, and rays. And the holocephali are the weird fishes. Feel good so far? Okay, so here we see that ichthys business again. Okay, this must be another fish. Okay, this word looks even harder to say, right? So this is Osti. So think like ah. Uh, D, ick, bees. Oh, osti ick bees. In other words, ick bees being fishes, osti referring to the fact that these fish have bones. So we can break our fish into two groups fundamentally, cartilaginous fishes and bony fishes. Okay. So most of the time when you think of fish, this is probably what you're thinking of. Okay, and that's not for no small reason because of all of the vertebrates that exist on the planet, this is the most diverse. And part of that is because things have been living and evolving in the ocean for an extraordinarily long time. And being bony is a very large advantage, so it allows very good survivorship. Okay, so what do we mean by being very diverse? So compared to the 900 species that we saw in sharks, we have 25,000 and growing species. So that's two orders of magnitude more known diverse species within this group. Okay. Just like before, there we have class. Okay, so within that big group, we have two smaller groups. Okay. Man, we thought osteoichthys was hard to say and read. <laughs> Okay, so at the back here, Opterygia. I did not make these words up, guys. That's all I got to tell you. Okay, so if I want to say this word, it's Actinopterygia. Act, in, opt, er. Inch. E. I. Okay. So this first top group, the Actinopterygii, ready to say it all together? Actinopterygii. Latin's fun, right? right. So our Actinopterygii is the vast majority of the fish's diversity. So if you think of a fish right now, that's probably the group it belongs to. Okay. Sunfish, salmon, trout, rainbow fish, right? any reef fish that you're picturing, anything you ate for dinner last week. Actinopterygia. Okay. The other group here, Sarcopterygii. Right, so that second part of the word stays the same. The 
Opterygii, such the sarcoph is new. Okay? It's a bunch of weird fishes. Basically with little arms on them and can breathe air and all sorts of amazingly cool stuff we'll talk about. But this is very low diversity. Grand scheme, there's only three or four species that belong here. They're very important, but it makes up a very small amount of this 25,000 number. <clears throat> All right, with me so far? I can do it every slide. All right, amphibia. There's a word we can say. That's not new. Scientists weren't being jerks here, were they? All right, so class amphibia. Okay, looks intuitive, is intuitive. That's exactly what we would expect it to be, thankfully. All right, so this is all the amphibians, exactly what we would think of frogs, toads, salamanders, newts. Probably a new friend that we don't recognize. Right? There's a whole bunch of legless amphibians that maybe you're not familiar with. It's going to be a nice, fun ride. Not surprising, however, given the way amphibians are, this is not the most diverse class, although more diverse than cartilaginous fishes are. Okay, so we're in the fourth, woo, woo, it's fine. Okay, so we have three subgroups under here. Don't stress too much that we're using the word order instead of subclass right now. Taxonomy is just a nightmare fuel. Okay, so we'll talk about this a little more when we get there. But fundamentally, it's equivalent. So right now, it's just a word that means a group within this class. Okay, so we have three groups. I have them in the same order here with their pictures to help with the identification early on. Okay, so you're probably familiar with the two. Anura, being frogs and toads. Caudata, being salamanders. So the only really new one probably to you is the Gymnophiona. Looks weird, but at least that one's synthetic. <laughs> and that's these little legless guys. They're basically salamanders without legs or eyes. Okay. Same thing for reptilia. Here we see a slightly higher diversity. Okay. And that bodes to the fact that reptiles are tougher than amphibians. Right? Because amphibians have that breathability through their skin. They're much more vulnerable to all sorts of stuff like pollution. The reptiles are a little bit tougher. Okay. Again, we see the same sort of setup. Okay, a class that we recognize, reptilia. Oh, that must be reptiles, thank heavens. Okay, within that class, we have three groups within that class. Okay, and nicely, okay, two of the three of those are even recognizable. Turtles. Crocodiles and their brethren, and alligators and gerals and all of those kind of bits, right? So that only leaves this one. Okay, well, what reptiles didn't I talk about? Snakes, snakes and lizards. Okay, so most of the reptiles, quite frankly. <laughs> all right, so not surprisingly, most of the diversity is actually coming out of that last one. Okay. Let's 
So my list up here goes in the same order as these three do. Lizards and snakes are my squamata. Okay, we'll finish up with birds and mammals on, oh geez, Wednesday, heaven help me, um, and start looking at some important vocab. Uh, when we get there, uh, your, oops, one more button. There we go, now your socrative is up. Cleaned up so it's not confusing here. There we go. So please make sure you're doing your socrative. I still see that some people have been forgetting. And while I'm certainly looser at the beginning of the semester because I can see who's sitting. So if you go into your attendance, you'll see missing Socrative next to your name when I can't be present. Um, I'm eventually going to lose track of that as I'm setting up. So please make sure you're filling these things in. <clears throat> and the back two rows, once you complete your Socrative, um, you can head out the back door. Please have a wonderful weekend. And it's a little bit extra long. We're not going to get a lot of breaks this semester. So do your very best to enjoy it and do something relaxing for yourself. I know. Same girl. Absolutely same. I was looking at the counter. I was like, oh my god, this is going to be so bad. I've had anxiety about it all winter break. So if it's worth anything, I'm going to be on the same boat you guys are. And I don't know who made that schedule, but I was like, I'm alone. Yeah. About it. Our class has a few sneak weeks built in for one quarter. I decided we were going to have some days off. I'm not doing that. I don't know. I actually don't know how to pick up orders for next week. And being graduating in two of I can't do it. <laughs> we're going to do it. We're going to do it together. No, I feel like my last like, schedule was worse. It was five one less class, so everything just feels like it might be like. <laughs> That's a good attitude. I have one weekend. I have 12 weekends. The, the rest of you can go when you're done as well. I apologize. I'm getting chit chatty here. <laughs> I'm not trying to hold you hostage. Y'all so patient. <laughs> no space. Lady, stop talking. <laughs> have a good weekend, guys. Thank you. Did you get a wife, Simone? Good morning. Good morning.